And um, to those that don't know Olivia, I'm going to hand over straight to her and go, hello, Olivia. How are you? Hello, Caroline. It's so lovely to be here. Um, there's so much going on in the world right now that it's wonderful to connect, to um, exchange energies, information, frequencies, because basically information is also a sort of a frequency. So just a few words about myself. Um, my name is Olivia, but I also go by Ezayana, which is the name of my soul. Um, I'm pretty young when it comes to the Earth age. Um, the way that I was born was actually pretty much interesting as I've basically, um, I was supposed to have a twin, but that body was pretty much um, infiltrated. So even when I was in the belly, I had to pretty much fight for survival, if you call it this way. <laughs> Um, I remember myself as a very little girl, just kind of in my garden and suddenly seeing these beautiful rainbow orbs around me. And ever since I remember, I've basically felt that there is some presence, there is always something watching after me and that I'm supposed to do something else, that I'm supposed to do something different. I'm supposed to go towards a different path. And at some point I always have, but I never really knew where it's going to lead me. So my awakening started about three years ago. I was struggling with certain health issues that I couldn't really find any tradi traditional solution for. Um, it, these were chronic headaches, also connected with different pains in my body. And there was a point where I always felt like everyone who was trying to say that something wrong, that there is something wrong with me, they weren't quite right. And I've been always against any kind of traditional solution. So I started to search for certain answers and that led me towards different spiritual teachings. Uh, and that actually led me towards the knowledge of Ashayana Dean. That is like, I would say, an inspiration for the work that I'm doing because through different, um, through different spiritual experiences that happened later on at my third day awakening, that happened actually a week after I, I got rid of the headaches, um, which I let, later found out were actually different frequencies trying to override certain disharmonics in my brain, but there just wasn't enough of the Christic quantum. I had to bring certain amounts of the Christic quantum in order to be able to, to finish the pain and to actually open up <clears throat> my pineal, my inner eyes for something new. So this is kind of like a background. Uh, what I, What my experience led me to was actually towards assistance, was towards basically fulfilling my contract as a healer. I'm basically working with many people probably already heard about the plasma in different sorts of forms, as it's also often um, mentioned in a distorted way amongst the new age movements, talking about the plasma events and all of this funny stuff. Um, However, for me, it's a, it's a frequency that basically touches the source. And with these frequencies, I am working on towards helping other people with all sorts of problems they are having, whether they are physical, mental, emotional, or spiritual, it's all interconnected. So here's a little bit about me. Awesome, thank you, love. Um, so talking about the the spiritual mental emotional and the plasma um how does that relate to our dna so if we that. look at the plasmas and the plasma body when we come from the source we actually individuate as a plasma silken wave of consciousness and that form later on let's say in simple terms becomes the plasma body 
And later on, the plasma body, if our consciousness decides to incarnate into different time cycles, it basically takes a little bit of that quantum. And then later, this plasma matter, this plasma substance actually starts to later being transformed into other states of matter, later becoming the light body, spirit body, and atomic body structures. If we look at our creation, we've got all different states of matter. And they are all plasma, actually. But plasma has many different forms. Plasma is like, if we think about it, there is always a core of a certain substance. For example, when we have our elements, and actually all of the elementals, there are actually 144 elementals with the 12 main elemental families, and they all, all actually come from water, if our matter was working in the correct way. They come from a substance called the hydrolase, which is like the organic living water. But the hydrolase is coming from other states of matter, from different types of plasma. And if you wanted to come back like to the top of this creation, or actually like to the beginning, um, we've got the eta or vapor consciousness. And this is also plasma. When source starts to basically express itself in many forms, it's doing it through different sorts of plasma, which is later kind of like downstepping into different forms of expression. So if we want to get to the core, we do it through activation of our plasma body, because that's basically connecting us back to these organic frequencies of internal creation. Because whenever we refer to the plasmas, the plasmas of the crystal river, the plasmas that actually um, connect us back to the core, to the God source, uh, we are referring to it as the internal creation. So in my understanding, it's very similar. <laughs> um, I came to Ashiana Dean's stuff about um, two years ago, really like late in, you know, my incarnation. Um, <clears throat> but for me, everything's kind of worked backwards. So I've not learned any of her material. What I found was all of the things that I was mem remembering throughout my lifetime were correlating with what she had been talking about so having gone through my whole life thinking that i was the only one who had any memories of all these certain events suddenly a couple of years ago i was presented with <clears throat> ashiana dean's work and going oh my god that's when that happened that's why that happened because i would get the memory but have no context for it so that's how i've kind of come into um like your field if you see what I mean <laughs> and your understanding and how we've kind of come kind of in each other's spheres over Absolutely. the past couple of years but I have the same understanding that um, basically as you spiral down into manifestation you densify the plasma into various different um, structures that create us <laughs> multi-dimensionally exactly. and then into a physical form yes and light is also a type of a plasma actually plasma yes. created the light so if we look at it this way everything is made of plasma so it's a it's a really beautiful way to take a look at it because it's also a kind of like reflecting that as above so below so actually uh, the plasma frequencies are everywhere and they come from the source so we are all in the fields of the source. So I'm often laughing that actually like these teachings, I was raised along with them. Um, I started to feel the presence of the guardians actually just when I started working with these teachings. Um, it's like... So can, you, can you explain who are the guardians? Yes, explain. absolutely. So <laughs> I don't like to say they are extraterrestrials because I wouldn't say that they are. I would say that actually they are our they are our family. They are us from the future. That's how I understand them. So um, 
the way that I feel it and the way that I saw it many times during different experiences is that they have made their way through, they have completed ascension. So they are these parts of us that are with us in order to show us, to guide us, how we can also complete that process. But they are us and they are not wiser or more beautiful or whatever than us. They are actually um, aspects of ourselves. So whenever we different people have connections with the guardians or so they say angels or whatever, there are different names for that. I remember that in one of my uh, incarnations in the 18th century, I was calling them angels. And there's nothing wrong with that because I I didn't have the right terms at that time to call it uh, in a proper way. I like the name guardians because it's kind of like they give us this protection field. Uh, they are there for us if we need the guidance. Um, but they always refer to the fact that the whole knowledge is in us and they treat us equally because we are as powerful as they are. So that's how I perceive the guardians. Awesome. I, I would say the same. You know, I've I've had many kind of students over the years where I'm going, well, the guides aren't any better than you. <laughs> you know, they are. You can't resonate with something that, that is above you. Right. Everything is at the level of awareness that you are. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a frequency match and it wouldn't be resonating with you at all. Um, so, yeah, trying to stop people giving their power away, basically, to outside entities that might have nothing to do with them whatsoever. That totally makes sense. And uh, that resonates also because I remember that with each kind of like a milestone I was going through my awakening, um, I was having new and new contacts and I was like, OK, well, new guardians showing up. OK, I have a new team. <laughs> That's cool. I like it. Um, but then one of them, actually, they are called the Elysian Guardians. On one of these journeys, they actually made me realize, like, I was a part of them and I actually lived like 800 billion years on that planet. Because I was actually, that was that was the main uh, one of my struggles where I was like asking all the time, like, why am I all the time feeling like I miss something? All the time there is this sensation that I just don't belong here and I miss some place, but I think I won't find it here. And so they took me on this journey where I saw these beautiful places where I was actually projecting through a tree and I saw this beautiful forest with um, each one of the trees was different because each one of them is actually corresponding to a personal encryption. So you have your tree out there, we all do. <laughs> it's like a beautiful forest of um, of interconnected energies. And that's where I understood that I was in that place for a very long time. And I'm here only for, I don't even remember, I think 20 million years, if I remember correctly. So comparing to that, that's a very short time. Uh, I don't feel like I settled in yet, <laughs> which is all right. Um, but that's what helped me actually understand that I was a part of them. I am a part of them. I'm just on a certain mission to do something here. So all of these different aspects of ourselves, for me, how, how that kind of comes through is like they are part of our extended field. Right. So we can project our consciousness into any aspect of ourselves we choose. But we have in some ways kind of got ourselves stuck in a loop down here that you know we we kind of this is the main point of focus at the moment because this is where the most drama is happening is that right yes <laughs> exactly it's our um i think the main defects um that i'm especially noticing with people when i work with them is the emotional body which is like a little child that is scared and that needs a hug and the mental body which got split into the ego and the higher self and if the ego is not able to raise the consciousness enough to reconnect with the higher self, then this conduit is closed. And that's where you're kind of totally feeling stuck in this reality. So 
that's actually what is happening to many people. So there's other th there are other things going on though, isn't there? Like um, we had a conversation the other day about frequency fences and what they are and how they um, there are several of them and how they manifest. So we've got some around the planet, but we've also got some within our field, right? Yes, because basically, um, like people have been asking me, um, why am I catching certain distortions in my field? Even if I'm protecting myself, like why is why do I have to keep clearing myself? Like isn't one time <laughs> per month just enough? But the thing is, we need to understand that we are all the time interconnected with the planet. If the planet is giving us the frequencies, it's also passing on certain distortions to our field. Um, so the way it is manifesting, uh, if the planets, let's say the Merkaba fields, are running on reversal, this is also happening to us. Or if our fields start to run on a reversal and reach a certain critical mass, it also starts to occur in the planet in the planetary field. So again, we've got this interrelationship where we are connected with the planet on the level of the light body and the plasma body. And um, these bodies, um, they all the time exchange the information on these unconscious levels for us. Um, so when we are talking about different artificial fields, like let's say the net field, which is like this artificial dome, like a frequency fence, you call it, um, which is surrounding this planet. We also, we are connected through the mental body actually to that field. So we have the same configuration. And um, that's spreading a lot of distortions and also depending on the place where you are on the planet, you might be receiving either lighter or heavier energies. There are certain kind of like uh, places right now, it's of course the Middle East, where right now there are certain operations taking place, um, where they try to open certain wormholes in the, in the grids, make the net field, the frequency fence stronger, and that is also affecting us. So we experience it tangibly, we sometimes feel tired because of the whole energy processing, our body is trying to constantly get rid of these heavy energies. That's why we start to feel more and more sensations in our bodies. So there's a lot of going on when it comes to these uh, frequency fences and actually how they direct, directly interface with our anatomy. So one of the major things that we, um, for me, with the frequency fences is being able to assist those disincarnate um, consciousness that, that are finding it difficult to actually get out of the frequency fences and, and go home. Um, and we were working together we, un, unknowingly. <laughs> unknowingly. The other day. <laughs> yeah. So what was happening was um, I'd been helping from my individual harmonic I one of the things that I do is I assist souls from this plane of existence is the only way I can describe it out of here into where they need to go next on a soul consciousness level and um, I had this vision of Olivia um, closing down all of these portals and I was running behind her <laughs> Sweet, literally picking up the souls in order for them to get out so that they didn't go into the phantom matrix. So, do you want to describe what phantom matrix is and how, what the um, portals were that you were closing down? Absolutely. Well, it's a heavy work. <laughs> It's a really heavy work, um, but just to give a context of what the phantom matrix is, it's the same as the black hole. So basically it's a system that got cut off from the source. Um, it got cut off from the source because, because of the certain reversals that happened in the shields in, this, in the base programming structure of a certain system. 
it could be a planet, it could be like a solar system, a galaxy, or even the whole universe. Right now we are actually facing, um, well, the Guardians actually wanted me to mention that, that we are getting the frequencies directly from the center of our Milky Way, where we've got the black hole in the middle, just right, right in the middle of it. And they just told me actually before this, um, before this meeting that that's how they want to kind of like upgrade this net field right now. But I don't think they will manage to do that. So as basically as they're, they're... that. But right now these atoms are taking place on the Middle East because that's where the direct interface is. So they want actually it to spread to other countries the 3D conflict, but it's going to be the same when it comes to the energetic levels. Anyways, um, when we are talking about the black hole systems, if they want to survive, they need to feed with other energies, with other souls, anything that basically has some of the organic quantum. They are like energy vampires. We have some people who are energetic vampires. When we talk to them, we just feel totally drained from energy. So these are very magnetic um, places. Like basically they are trying to suck in anything that tries to get in. Um, my work that I'm doing out there is basically getting inside it, reprogramming the shields. So certain passages, certain Christic passages can be opened because right now, just so people get a higher context, a higher perspective, is that actually the whole planet Earth is hosting many, many of the fallen systems, phantom systems. Um, that's all thanks to the fact that Earth is basically the host, is receiving frequencies, the plasma frequencies, which are actually the only ones that can get the fallen systems out of this really terrible situations they are in. Some people on this planet, and I know quite a few, have this specific coding in their DNA template that is actually uh, directly corresponding to these black hole systems. So that means they could get inside the black hole system and they can get out. And that mainly involves working in the in the dream state, where if man, I've heard many uh, testimonials, especially for the past few months, that people have these holographic dreams that they just don't make sense. Um, but this is all a holographic projection. And then whenever I was like coming back to this later after I woke up, this hologram was just dissolving and I was seeing what I was actually doing where I was reprogramming these shields, um, getting out the souls that got there actually uh, against their free will. That's also what I'm assisting on when I'm working with others because depression, panic attacks, all of this is coming from the black hole systems. If you have your consciousness, a part of yourself in the black hole, then you're getting direct transmissions from these fallen places. So you, that's how you actually have a direct interface where you receive a lot of reversals in your anatomy. So getting out these souls is right now a priority. Um, there's been quite a few, quite a lot actually being released. That's why they also had to initiate another attempt in Israel to kind of get their supplies replenished, if you see it this way. So the work that I'm doing there is basically getting inside those wormholes, reprogramming the grids, which, it, which will actually shut down the interface between Earth and these black hole systems, but also opening the passage to assist these souls to get out. And that's when you come into the game. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And that's my bit. <laughs> so we're kind of working like... um in tandem with each other so olivia comes in does the black hole um stuff closes down any interference that's trying to come in and harvest the souls as they're departing coming out of the body and then i'll come in kind of behind her and then assist them out into the trans passages and away from this version of earth that's what I would say. It's it's like this, this version, version exactly. <laughs> yeah. 
so talking about versions of Earth. Okay, so um, another th thing that we've kind of spoken about previously is about the different timelines. Okay, so there's supposed to be a timeline split very soon, isn't there? Between um, like the negative agenda scenarios and a more Christic or, or I would term organic, our organic um, timeline. How do you perceive that? So I wouldn't call it an agenda. I would actually refer to it as the frequency wave, a frequency spiral. So uh, we've got the crystal spiral, which is the organic one. And it's organic because it's basically all the time connected to the source. When we mean that something is connected to the source, there is this huge myth in the scientific communities that the universe keeps expanding and growing and who knows what's going to happen in the future. Is it like infinite or whatever? Um, but actually the universe and the planets, us also, we have our expansion and contraction cycles. So whatever has been put into the creation is also going to flow back. Whenever we send a certain energy to the source, we receive a backflow return. So when we are talking about the crystal spiral, this one can expand outward, but it can also contract inward. So this way it's all the time connected to this point zero, which is the source. And it's natural. When we are talking about the metatronic spiral, this is the one which is created artificially. It's actually stuck at a certain point. And if you wanted to kind of like contract it back, you wouldn't end up in the same point. Um, it was actually proven on different geometric patterns, uh, mainly the Katara grid, which is also referred to as the tree of life. Um, when we are talking about the metatronic spiral, this one needs to be fed by the black hole systems in order to keep expanding and trying to override the crystal spiral. And this one is also referred to as the Fibonacci spiral because it's following the numbers of the Fibonacci, which is like the one, the, then you've got the one, two, three, five, eight, thirteen. So it's kind of like adding the numbers of the previous uh, sequence. Um, so these spirals, they, there are certain moments when they intersect and they carry certain quantum. The crystal spiral is actually a binary spiral. That means that you always like multiply it by two. So it's a very widely expanding spiral. So you've got the two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64. It's expanding much quicker than the metatronic spiral because it carries more quantum. So when we are talking about the spirals, it's actually uh, good to realize that these are certain waves of frequency. Yes, they also align with certain timelines. Um, but actually, if we look at it this way, we experience the shifts of timelines all the time. There were a few ones in August. I think the last one was like, I don't know, last Monday, I think we were. Yeah, Monday. Saying. I think yeah. so. <laughs> yes, and they told me it's the last one before the split split yeah yeah um so basically when we talk about the timeline shifts because people might think okay if there was one why am i still here so that means i didn't catch it or what <laughs> but when we are talking about this we actually mean that we align with a certain probability that is bringing us certain frequencies that our body is aligning with so basically to change a probability or a timeline, it means to align with a certain frequencies that are going to be raising the frequencies of our body or decreasing them. And progressively, we will be shifting to another time space location. But there are many different versions of Earth. We are lucky enough that our probability that we are located in is directly um, intersecting with the host. It's basically being held in these wonderful arms of the host. 
So the way I have seen it, actually, um, that was my vision because I was asking about it. That it's not going to be the way it was in 2012 when we last had these spirals intersecting. It's going to be different. I think you've been telling me that you had this vision of this triple spiral. Yeah, yeah. so that's how it's actually going to be. That there will be a third pillar of energy which will actually override any disharmonics from the metatronic spiral and basically will assist in aligning all those who on the higher self level chose the host, chose the ascension. And this will be the beginning of these progressive changes. They will be progressive and there could be escalations of many different, different dramas for a certain period of time. Um, but that needs to happen because literally these frequencies are going to vacuum anything that doesn't belong to this system. So for me, it's a beginning of certain changes, but they will be progressive. They will come with time. Absolutely agree. So, yeah, I mean, the, the, the thing that had been coming up a lot for me and for the students out there, they'll know what we've been I've been teaching them is about the triple spiral and the tri wave of energy that's coming in um so it's not in polarity anymore so you you've got um right and wrong light and dark and the third spiral is the um conduit between them both um so that it doesn't have to be one or the other but both together does that make sense <laughs> it's like it's bringing everything together so that there is harmony with that triple energy that is able to um not only kind of expand on the light side but also to reverse the what we would term negative polarity to bring the polarities together Exactly. It's kind of like the unification spiral is yes. the one which basically carries the consciousness that everything is in union. That's how I felt it when I saw this vision that we will call that we will say that something is good or bad, but actually the bad was also good a long time ago. So we all come from that one unification, if you call it this way. Yeah. Yeah. OK, um, so there's another um, thing that's been coming up a lot with things like the Nomi gene. Um, can you ex can you give us a little bit about that? So we have our, our DNA. Uh, what's the Nomi gene? <laughs> OK, <laughs> all right, so. Our DNA template has certain codes and we are activating them actually through different timelines. So actually the amount of the DNA strands we have activated in a certain incarnation, it's actually like our effort throughout all the lifetimes we had, like from the linear perspective. Um, when we are talking about certain genes, maybe I will actually start with explaining what the K plus 8 factor is, mm -hmm. because that is directly related. When we are talking about the K plus 8 factor, we are referring to the Christ plus factor. So on the level of the external creation, so like let's say on the level of the light body, we've got a certain amount of DNA strands. If you've got at least 12 DNA strands, you're good because the D D12 is the Christ consciousness. And, but you can have actually up to 48 on the level of the light body. If you've got at least 24, then you're already an indigo. Um, the 12 DNA strands is like the typical template of the angelic human, so like the organic human race from Earth. Um, when we are referring to the K plus 8 factor, the Christ plus factor, we've got the plus. And that means that is actually determining how many of the organic plasma currents we can actually, um, our template can process. 
Um, so for example, there is like the K plus one, so you can only process the frequency from one of the plasma suns because we've got like the core plasma suns that give energy, that give quantum to the whole creation without getting into much detail. But the K plus eight allows you for processing the frequencies from all of the eight core plasma suns because we've got the eight core, eight core plasma sun cells of the creation. It's on the level of like a huge cosmic structure called the Cosmea. Sorry, Cosmea. <laughs> Cosmea <laughs> is something different because the cos Cosmea has seven Cosmeas and the Cosmina score. But let's maybe not get into that because I will go crazy <laughs> myself. <laughs> All right. Anyways, when we are referring to the K plus eight factor, we can we have an access to all of the plasma frequencies and that's allowing us for transfiguration. This is also referred to as the transfiguration factor. And that's actually adding thousands of DNA strands to our template on the plasma body level. Uh, so right now with the host, even if you don't have the K plus eight factor, if you connect and activate your plasma body, you start to progressively get back this potential. Um, and the K plus eight factor is important because right now there is so much of the reversed plasmas running in the grids. And there are many movements that I have encountered that are actually utilizing, especially among the new age, talking about these weird plasma events, um, that they are basically like saying, oh, I'm just like spreading the plasma to the grids, whatever. And then the, they send these dif different images of the sky. Um, that absolutely doesn't resonate. Um, so the way to overwrite all of these reverse plasmas running in the grids is getting the sun eight plasma, which can never get reversed. The frequency from the plasma from the sun eight doesn't hold any reversals. So to put it very simple, the K plus eight factor is basically allowing your plasma body to activate on organic currents that are not going to get reversed as long as you're running the sun eight currents. And you can, of course, run the other plasma sun currents as well. But it's good that they are supported by the sun eight current because this way, you know, you're doing the right thing. <laughs> With the nomis, uh, I wanted to say nomisid. That's <laughs> that's the one in the earth core. Uh, the nomi code is basically like, let's say, a level higher because we've got the eight core plasma sun currents. But our creation is going even higher than that. We've got something called the rainbow plasmas. And the rainbow plasmas. Are basically like the plasmas, let's say, from from the EFI, from the gut source consciousness, if you want to put it this way, it's coming from something called the creation domains, the free core creation domains and the NOMI and the NOMI code, when it was introduced, actually it was introduced in the first seeding of the human race that we are right now. And the NOMI code, if someone has it, you have the coding of all of the angelic human race. So basically you're holding the coding of all of the tribes. It's like all of the spectrum is in your template. Um, so that's basically how it works. If you are the carrier of the NOMI code, you are actually able to make the atomic transfiguration. So you can take your body with you along with your plasma quantum, and that's allowing you for basically the transfiguration. And people who carry the NOMI code spread these plasma frequencies to the planet. So they are very much essential right now. So I hope that was pretty much understandable and that gives a little bit of the context. So I'll go in. I have mentioned, um, I think it might have been last mm -hmm. time, the difference between um, transmigration and transfiguration. So transmigration is um, where you leave the physical body behind and you migrate your consciousness from this um, perception of reality into where your other stations of consciousness are. When 
you trans my um transfigurate what you're doing is you're turning your atoms into light or or, or more appropriately plasma <laughs> and then you are able to dissolve yourself from this state of creation and put your consciousness into any other state of creation taking your body with you so you can demanifest and manifest at will that's how from my perception from my perception transmigration and transfiguration happen so with the nomi gene um the beings that carry the k8 plus factor are the ones that can assist others in gaining that template because they already have all races that have ever existed on this planet and in this universe within their DNA. Right? Exactly. <laughs> that's that's a actually you understood it just correctly. Um, I've had that situation lately on one of my sessions that I just kind of felt like, wow, did I actually do something? Because I just felt so many frequencies running through my templates. And the guardian said that like, you actually gave the host to that person. And now that you brought it, this up, I was like, oh, I activate, I helped her actually activate this nomi coding because right now we can activate it in our epigenetic overlay which is like an overlay surrounding our dna template so if you activate it in the epigenetic overlay even if you don't have it literally in your physical dna you can also basically make your way through even with your body so that's what us the nomi carriers do even unconsciously yeah, I mean, for me, it, um, I think that kind of recognition of what that was um, and how that activates, it, it generally is through my skin. So I, I see like all of the different codes coming up for repatterning and they're just transmitted in a wave from myself to whoever needs that particular code to reactivate within themselves that's how it comes for me in a very similar way actually <laughs> well, <okay. laughs> um, unless i'm working with someone directly so i'm actually like my healing i say that is actually the plasma body projection because my plasma plasma body actually has the abilities to heal so it's kind of like i notice that sometimes i'm talking to someone and my plasma body is just spreading the frequency by itself <laughs> And then suddenly the auric fields just change. I'm like, wow, okay. <laughs> Not sure what happened, but I'm going to get to it. So I could check and see if everything is working properly. But the thing is that our plasma bodies cannot do anything wrong. It's like they can only do Christic things. That's how they are programmed. So like if you ever thought that your plasma body can, I don't know, come at night and attack someone, no. <laughs> <laughs> that's, no, not, that, that's something that's not else. the case. So just to calm everyone down, if you receive an attack, that's never from someone else's plasma body. It's usually from the astrals. There's also a level of that, though, um, that is, how can I put it? The person receiving the attack, it's also part of their thought patterning. Um, I think we've had this conversation as as well before about um, we don't really realise how powerful we are on a mental level and how good we are at creating things. So when you come into learning about responsibility for your own thought forms, because they are forms, they can take a form, um, it's like you could project something at someone that creates something in their field just by thinking negatively about them. So this is like a level of responsibility that um, being aware of your own thoughts, slowing your brain down, 
enough to be able to um, know what you're thinking and what is your own thought and what is something else. <laughs> yes, because sometimes we are like running different thoughts in our head and there's just this moment where you're like, wait, where is this even coming from? <laughs> so yeah, some of the thoughts are not even ours and they often come from these fields that we were talking about, the frequency fences. So um, the power of it is huge. So when we think about all of those people doing terrible things to other people and we think like, oh my gosh, where is where is God where that happens? Well, the thing is that they are always manipulated by something. There is always a certain force standing behind them and doing this. Um, like certain people not even remembering their crimes. And we wonder like, wow, where is this even coming from? Is this person possessed or what happened? And that's actually pretty much going through this whole um, grid that we have in our brains. Um, I was watching uh, lately um, and it's like, we are, our body has certain places that actually correspond to different places in the universe and our galaxy. And they aligned the black hole, which is in the center of the Milky Way with our pineal gland. So that kind of gives us um, an interesting perspective on what's actually being transmitted to our brains uh, and how powerful it could be. So all of the pineal activation and stuff like that could potentially be coming from the phantom. Never thought about it this way, but <laughs> <laughs> if you think about it right now, then yes, it could be. Um, they showed it to me recently um, because I've been basically my problems with with my head and the way I was feeling the pain. It's like one of the, let's say, doctors, whatever. I never took the medicine from him, but he basically diagnosed this as the, as the tension headaches. That basically this kind of like a layer between the brain and the skull is basically like the nervous structure is distorted in there. Well, it's not exactly distorted. It's blocking certain frequencies from coming. So when the metatronic energies are hitting in the grids, basically the frequencies for me, they stop right here. That's why when I see something, unless I'm actually having something implanted, I know that it's true. But for people who don't have that, it's basically either creating something like this on the energetic level, because we can, that's how our power, that's how powerful our mind is. So what I eventually did, because that was like pretty painful, I just created like another layer <laughs> as a protection. But yeah, many people who would be like, you know, suddenly seeing Jesus or and or being like, oh my gosh, I got my pineal activated. I can see angels and orbs. Be careful with that. Clear your field, work with some plasmas and see for yourself because maybe it got opened and maybe you can actually switch it to follow the Christic waves, but see for yourself because you don't know what exactly triggered this kind of an activation. So that's that's the kind of advice I would give to people who experience the awakening of the pineal gland. So the way I've been um, kind of advising people, um, students basically, is that like with pineal activation, it's a lot about viewing outside, right? seeing things outside of yourself. Whereas if you actually flip the screen, so you're looking on the inside of you, <laughs> that's where the information is the true information from my perspective, it's like if you look inside rather than everything being, I'm going to view all of the other dimensions outside of myself. It's like, well, how about viewing them from the inside? Interesting, because that's what I've always been subconsciously doing. <laughs> <laughs> 
So, so I'm teaching this way of of internal vision rather than external because there are so many frequencies outside of ourselves and so many different distortions that the information isn't correct that's coming you know people people go into all sorts of different visions and channelings and you know other beings and stuff like that when your internal connection to source is always there yes that's how egyptians in the past they would be actually like they had to go through a pyramid with their incomplete darkness and just seeing through their pineal gland that was one of their tests so it's like they saw nothing so they had to trust their internal vision so i haven't tried that out yet <laughs> maybe one day um but about the vision um we don't even realize that what we see with our physical eyes that's also distorted because it's like when we look into all of these books about the eyes you know anatomy we always have this focal point in front of our eyes. But this focal point, it should be in the pineal gland. The ener if the energy current is going through one eye, it gets stuck because it's intersecting with that one from the other eye. And this is connected to these black hole currents running through our brain. Um, but normally, the current should return to the other eye and they would be intersecting in the pineal and that was giving us a full spectra vision, 360 degrees. degrees. <laughs> Is this simple? Yeah, agree with you. Because you can see through the back of your head, you know? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it requires practice, but you can absolutely. Oh, yeah. So are there any questions? I'm going to put it out to the audience. We've been talking for an hour now. So are there any questions at all? Have we gone above your head? <laughs> yeah, OK. Have a bit of a drink. I'm sure you and I could carry on talking forever. Yeah exactly there's you know there's so much to cover up and i really like the fact that um your insights are pretty much aligning with mine or sometimes you will say something i'm like oh okay <laughs> <laughs> oh it's the same the other way around you know we cut we kind of do this with each other i think yeah yeah i think so um just before we started there was like a small delay with the transmission the way i was seeing it is that we were like standing in front of each other um, in some realm and both of us had these like triple spirals going through our bodies and these like they arced over and just like kind of met in the middle and there was like an outburst of frequency and there was like a huge spiral <laughs> <laughs> as we were as we were coming into contact with each other right yes yes yeah. then kind of felt like different souls showing up so I guess these were the listeners. <laughs> this is what happens when you combine fields. Exactly, exactly. And that's that's what the uh, twins mainly can do um, when it comes to merging frequencies, um, merging their templates, if you're actually certain that your twin is your twin. Um, so this, should we talk about that for a little bit? Because this is something that's been coming up a lot, <laughs> a lot, a lot, a lot. And yes. especially for me personally, as well as Likewise. Um, everything else. <laughs> so let's get into the twin conversation. <laughs> OK, so. A lot of. Um, how can I say it? misinformation there's a lot of misinformation about what what twins are what their purpose is um we have this romanticized view about you know a relationship or coming together um for particular missions there is an element of that but from your perspective what the hell <laughs> 
<laughs> what the hell is going on with twins? Um, and like, how many do we actually have? Thousands. <laughs> <laughs> Just depends what level you're looking from. Because like, if I tell someone, it's like that someone is asking me about a certain person. I'm like, you guys are from the same soul family. Yeah, that means you are twins. That means you are sharing the same common soul. But the soul has produced 12 incarnates. So it's like you're one of these 12 incarnates that share the common soul. Then we've got the Oversoul, Christos Avatar, Rishi. I feel like we are connected on the Rishi level. I don't know yes. how that resonates with you, but I think we have the yes. same Rishi. <laughs> um, there is a specific type of twins that are the Tantri Asia twins. And that's where we get into this wonderful story about the Aiden and the Yoshi. And that basically Aiden is holding 33% of the energetic quantum. Yoshi has the 66. And the Yoshi is basically holding the Christar for the Aiden in case he falls. Because if the Yoshi falls, Aiden falls along with her. Um, when it comes so, the, to the, so the Yoshi is the female yes. aspect. Okay. So when we talk about female aspect, we're talking about the magnetic, mm -hmm. right? They have more magnetic quantum, right? Exactly, yes. And basically the Tantri Asia twins is like a connection on the level of the plasma template. Um, there is like, um, there's a lot of deception these days when it comes to that. Um, especially the, because if you want to infiltrate an Aiden from the perspective of the energetics, it's easier because the Aiden has just the 33% of the quantum. With Yoshi, it's more difficult. So they would send like a fake Aiden to get into her fields and make the Christar fall. So um, that's what I have experienced on a personal level. Uh, <laughs> and that was a big lesson. Um, but it was a lesson of discernment and of understanding that if you have a twin and you're certain of him or her, that's wonderful. But you can also complete this ascension yourself. You have that potential and if you keep raising your frequencies, you might end up on the median earth and find your twin out there. Why not? <laughs> so I think, yeah, I mean, um, for me, it depends on like. Um, so in my experience, I have had multiple twin flame relationships and they have come to me as different density of twins so you you come in you meet a particular um level of twin and then you move up in consciousness right so you you open up your um dna template you find more of the frequencies that you're um you're not activated in that's the way i would say it and then you you increase that by having that interaction with a twin. Yes. So you're, you're kind of working your way through <laughs> these different relationships and they don't have to all be sexual, by the way, just so that like, you know, it's not just a relationship thing. Um, but it's the combination of those two beings coming together, which create that expansion in consciousness. Um, that's how I see it. And then you get to the point where you have potentially found your highest station of consciousness that you could find a resonant match with. And they could be physically present here or on another dimension or in another universe. <laughs> it's about <laughs> you connecting in with the other aspect of yourself that resonates at that um level of awareness that's the only way i can describe it exactly yeah. that's that's how it makes sense so 
we all have our interstellar family out there and you know two females could be twins two males male and the female um doesn't really matter at this point it even happens often in family configurations that there are many people incarnating from similar collectives doing certain work together or it might even turn out that some of your personal guardians could be also your twins i have one of them which is my very close twin so <laughs> so that's all really nice um it's often this drama that is being projected out there to relationships um a lot of difficult emotions that a twin couple has to get through um, to integrate one aspect of the other um, because basically the way we connect in relationships from my perspective is also based on the karmic patterns that some someone has to show certain things that you need to fix about yourself and the other way around so that's also working um, for the twin couples but usually in a very um, intense way, I would say. Mm. Yeah. So twins in a nutshell. <laughs> yeah. There are infinite of them. Thousands. Um, and it just it depends on, I guess, who's incarnated with who in order to get that quantum together, right? That's how yes. it comes uh, and like you could meet your twin in some other life in the future or past incarnation from this perspective so everyone has one it's not like there are some exceptions to this rule each one of us has a twin it just there's also a question because um for example i've experienced um let's say someone a twin of mine and it's kind of like a reflection of myself, but turned upside down, if you get what I mean. Just like a ser everything that I had integrated about myself throughout this lifetime, she was like the reflection of these things that I had to integrate, but she didn't do that yet. And that was like a very close twin connection, I would say even too close, mm -hmm. where that contract had to be very strongly like um, broken, cut off, because it started to affect me on a personal level. So um, if there are these thoughts among different people, like I cannot make it without my twin or whatever, you can, especially now with the host. Even if your twin is going to have an issue, you can still ascend yourself. So nothing to worry about. Because you'd always um, meet up with their oversoul or their Rishi level or whatever the level that it is that you're connected to them at, right? Exactly. So these higher aspects, we'll be working with them. Um, it's it's sometimes difficult for, for us, like kind of from this 3D perspective to assist someone who's just stuck in certain projections in certain illusions so finding our way finding their way out of it is kind of their job we can assist them with it but if there is certain resistance or or if we notice that this is too draining for us there is a moment where it's good to stop for a moment tune in with ourselves and see what is the best for us because if, if we think about it this way if we just fall along with them there will be no rescue for them either. So sometimes the way, the best way we can do is, is to work on integrating aspects of ourselves. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the, I'm, from, yeah, my perspective, like the, the twins don't actually have to be in the same body either. Like you could have one twin at one level in one body and one twin in another body at a different density in another body. Yes. <laughs> I've met one of them when I was on Median Earth. <laughs> and I kept my body for, there for two months. I had a really t hard time coming back. Um, it's like I literally felt like for two months of my life I was living in two realities at once um, where it's like I would be here and then I would just like lay down on bed and come there so 
it was all like um, these realities were literally overlapping each other. But well, there was a point where I had to come back <laughs> to focus more on my more on my mission here. So yeah, that's basically um, how it was. Which is where we get into this is the point of focus because this is where the most drama is at the moment. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So what can, what can we do um, to help everybody else with whatever the drama is that they're going through? Or um, how can, what advice would you give? What advice would you give for people to come into their own? I would call it the conscious detachment where you stop this whatever routine you have where you turn on your TV and you watch all the news, like catching up what I missed when I was asleep. Um, start having like a routine where you go inside yourself. And what that means is that you can just go out for a walk in the morning if the weather is nice. You can do a meditation, just sit in silence and see what's going to come up. Um, basically have this moment every day where there is just you, nobody else around you and your own space. Because being with you is going to, um, is going to give you the guidance you need. Um, if you don't feel good with yourself, then, then, then that means you should definitely be more with yourself in order to feel comfortable. Um, being with yourself is allowing you to actually look into what is it that you need to integrate about yourself. And if you are focused on what the external hologram, the agenda is trying to project to you, to your experience, then you're just falling into that fallen wave. Um, it's happening right now. I mean, we see this timeline, we had the COVID, then we had the Ukraine, and then suddenly we, ha we have Israel. Um, I live in Poland, so there was so much drama, um, like I would say on the news, not necessarily here, um, with Ukraine and all that was going on out there. Um, but if you kind of see what's going on around you, instead of listening what they are telling you, you will see that the truth is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not saying that there wasn't any war. There was. But the reality is a little bit different. Um, but it's not even so important for us. Because if we create the space, the safe space that we feel, feel comfortable in, then from that point we have certain means to to be comfortable with ourselves maybe assist someone that we feel we could help but if we fall into this vicious circle of fear then we won't be able to help anyone so if you want to spread some peace and love and light then stay in your own safe space that's the best you can do yeah how do you feel about it um, I think that there are a lot of um, trying to manipulate people into creating the 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 programs. So for me, um, meditation. Right. So when you are able to in in internalize your own thought processes and sit in meditation. Um, that would be my go-to for now because what meditation was actually designed to do from my perspective was to give you a stop point stop creating just stop enough to be able to view all of the things that you are creating already right so you might have 10 million thousand thoughts in your brain that you're not even aware of because you're so busy creating constantly on this loop 
right? And you'll have one thought come in and it won't even be yours, but you'll create that thought anyway and carry it down the track because that's what you're programmed with. Whereas if you sit back and meditate, um, you're slowing your brain down so that you can view the things that you're creating. Do you want to think that thought? Do you want to put that into the co-creational reality that we're in? Or do you want to backtrack and go, oh, no, not my thought or, oh, my gosh, I'm not thinking that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, it's so a, that would be my advice. It's it's definitely um, a good point to start with to to basically reach that point zero, as I call it. <laughs> Detach yourself and um, and see what is actually in your mind and where is it coming from? Because if you find the source, then everything is becoming very, very clear. Mm -hmm. Yep, definitely. And then you have no thought. <laughs> <laughs> no thought whatsoever. The words just come out of your mouth, right? Yes. <laughs> just a, just a stream. Sounds, anything that is supposed to. Yeah. Or just sitting in silence and that's it. that's basically like I would say heaven in this loud world because I always say like to people like how can I hear my guides they ask me I'm like well you have to sh kind of shut down your mental body first because the mental body if you compare your thoughts to the subtle messages because the way the our guardians contact us is through different waves of our body. And if we, if we are basically kind of like face docked in this reality and we progressively start to open ourselves to certain frequency waves, then these are like at first subtle things that we start to feel or hear in our body, or this is kind of like a feeling that goes through. Um, but if you compare that to the thoughts in the mental body, the thoughts are literally screens. They are this loud. <laughs> so um, I always have that, that if I'm just like very emotional, very much in the mental body going into like survival mode or whatever, I will never hear anything. I will never find a solution. So um, the only thing that my guardians will manage to tell me is like, go and just get some more peace into your body. So that's what I always do. And that's what I always advise to everyone. Shut down these thoughts and the answers will come. Yeah, absolutely. So are there any questions now? Anybody got any questions? No. Everyone's just too fascinated. They just want us to keep chatting, hey? Yes, it seems like it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. so is there anything else as a as a kind of final note is there anything else that you wanted to bring up let me see um i just wrote a few things down kind of like a minute before we started <laughs> um on a scroll yeah. because i was asking like am i supposed to prepare they are no they are like no you just go with the wave so i kind of feel like for my whole day my eyes were itching like and they still do so. I think I was transmitting a lot through the eyes. Um, I've had that today. But mine mine are kind of not um, so much itchy. Well, I had a bit of an itch. But they're more um, burning. Like I can feel burning the burn from like... All the time clearing my eyes. So, yeah. oh, that was a struggle. Um yeah, maybe there's one more thing I wanted to bring up um, about um, the certain, I would say, schemas, certain programs uh, that we basically catch ever since we are children. Um, because the main thing that right now is also happening with the spirals when we talk about it is people clearing their old karmic patterns. A very interesting experience I had yesterday is just like I was in a meditation, kind of trying to get into that zero point. 
but I just kept like coming back in time and I had this person coming up and like a specific situation that kind of let's say was the most triggering in a certain event causing some transformations in me and in that person too and it's like and suddenly like a white light going through and that vision was disappearing and I had that like with at least five people that it was just like I was detaching myself like on a very very subconscious level that it was just coming up and then disappearing um so with these timelines we are getting rid of these old programs we are stuck in and some of us have them since childhood these different uh schemas different ways we were born in and um and raised and also the programs from school where right now uh i've been working with quite a lot of children lately and all of these programs that they are carrying from school um like my brother for example he caught channeling <laughs> and um like each day there was like a certain period of time where each day it's like it's like he was coming back from school just really tired and like i was kind of like in my world so i was like okay he's just exhausted but eventually like i'm like okay let's do something about it and um I think two or three parts of the, his consciousness were actually stuck in the phantom realities. So that's happening through the video games as well. A lot of programming put out there, so we had to get rid of some of his games. <laughs> um, but luckily he has this inner standing of things. Um, but they were also coming from um, other people's projections. Um, and of course, from other interferences that also happen in the astral. So mm -hmm. what I'm often looking into that some people, um, they get born, there is a certain projection either coming from a parent or just from the environment and um, they just get stuck. And for example, they are like, you know, living like even 30 years with only 80% of quantum in their bodies. And that becomes a serious issue. Uh, where it's hard for them to connect with themselves because there is all the time something kind of like disturbing them from that um, difficulties with sustaining the body, the physical body as well because of very little energy amounts. So when we are basically um, talking about these uh, different programs, there are these subconscious programming that we get through different um, programming, but there are also these very unconscious um, interferences connected to these black holes. So if we look right now at the situation in this world, it's very much complicated because we've got these attempts to open these holes. We've got the timelines coming up. There's a mess in the spiritual realm as well right now, if you kind of put it this way. So in order not to get too much overloaded with it, mm -hmm. silence, yeah, <laughs> going is, back silence is definitely required. So there's a, a, on the children front, there's a, f for me, there seems to be um, more indigos coming in or wanting to come into incarnation. Um, but they're struggling to get into the body. Like autism, ADHD, children that are high functioning and have DNA kind of activated on the um, 60 and above who can't get into the physical body because the body, the template here is so corrupt. And the distortions are so corrupt. So they might have this amazing wisdom, but it's not coming through into anchoring here physically, right? Um, so I find that an issue. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, but that's also connected to um, to the needle, let's say. Yes. Yeah, there's, um, there's a bit of that. You can say that word here, jab. <laughs> the jab, yeah. Um, a magical 
elixir or more like a poison. Yes. Um, because that's basically already causing distortions in the plasma template. And then if the parent somehow, because there's a lot of issues with fertility as well, but if a parent somehow manages um, to have a child, to conceive a child, um, then this child is being actually, um, there's an entry that is allowing a fallen soul to enter the body. That's where we get these scary children with the black eyes. Yeah. But originally, that body was actually planned for the angelic soul to incarnate. So there's a conflict between these two souls. So uh, we might see more of the um, polarity manifesting when it comes to uh, this issue, which is a serious one. Um, there are a lot of indigos indeed incarnating and those of them which came from parents which are conscious mm -hmm. um, or like are carrying a specific coding, they are actually referred as the Panclera generation. You've oh. got this clear abilities like the clairvoyance, clear audience. Yeah, yeah. So there will be more children born actually with this wonderful uh, skills. That's why the education system is already getting prepared for that, I feel, with more control. So I would say for all the parents, homeschooling is a really wise option. Yes, homeschool your children. Do not jab them at all keep them organic <laughs> exactly right. and then allow them to come into their gifts support them okay. if you can if you don't know how to do that reach out to someone who does someone who can guide them in their own particular talents and Cause we're gonna we're gonna need these kids hey Exactly. And if they see something, don't tell them it doesn't exist if you don't see it. <laughs> yeah, support um, them. Because the children's mind doesn't have any limits. We are the ones who set the boundary. So if they believe that something exists, they actually know that it exists. It's us who are like, no, it doesn't because I don't see it. So uh, if we don't close these um, this conduits, that are still active on a certain age, the child will be able to perceive a lot. Yep. Far more than, you know, us shut downies do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I think that we've kind of, it feels like we're going into a bit of a dip. Oh, yeah, the frequencies <laughs> were like, would I like to have a show? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> awesome. If, I mean, that would be a pleasure. Um, I'm open for all sorts of opportunities. Um, I'm here to speak because I was silent for three years ever since my awakening. So I'm ready. <laughs> Awesome. Yay. Another member of the family coming into Ooh. PFP. <laughs> and I'm sure we Love will it. have more shows where we just, you know, run the wave. It's been amazing. Yeah. So thank you for inviting me, Carlene. Oh, thank um, you for coming, sweetheart. It's been fabulous. Yes. So I'm sure that we will keep working together. If not here, then <laughs> I'm sure they work. Yeah. Wait right somewhere else. So Absolutely. thank you so much and thank you for everyone tuning in and listening to us, running the way the wave along with us and losing words. So <laughs> Yeah, we're obviously losing it. <laughs> Absolutely. Back into 3D now. Okay. So thank you everybody for coming in. Thank you, Olivia. Love to you sweetheart and um i will catch up with all of you next week take care loads of love lots of love <laughs> <laughs>